let's take a look at the chain rule. Let's take a look at the chain rule. In this section we will learn about composite functions. We will learn the chain rule for derivatives. We will learn the generalized power rule and we will learn how to take the derivative of a general exponential function. Let's start with the definition of a composite function. If you're given a function f of x and g of x, the composite function of f and g is the function whose values are given by f of g of x. When you look at this chart for the composite function, you see you start with x and you put it into the function named g. g of x comes out of that function and then goes into the function named f and what comes out of that function is f of g of x. Let's look at an example of a composite function. Let's say f of x is the function 3x plus 2 and g of x is the function 4x plus 1 quantity squared. If we're asked to find f of g of x, which is also denoted by the f with the, with the small zero g parentheses of x, what we're going to do is we're going to take g of x, which is 4x plus 1 quantity squared, and we're going to replace it in the function named f wherever we see an x. Notice that 4x plus 1 quantity squared replaced the x. Now we use some algebra to expand and simplify, so we get f of g of x equals 48x squared plus 24x plus 3 plus 2, which then becomes plus 5 as the last term. Let's look at the second example of a composite function. Suppose we had f of x equal to x squared and g of x equal to e to the 5x power. Now let's suppose we want to take the composition f of g of x. This means we're going to take the value of g of x, which is e to the 5x power, and we're going to put it in place of x in the function named f. This gives us e to the 5x power quantity squared, which we simplify to e to the 10x power. Let's look at a really big problem involving the derivative. Suppose we needed to find the derivative of the quantity y equals 4x squared minus 3x all raised to the 25th power. Right now the only way we have to do this is to expand 4x squared minus 3x to the 25th power using algebra and then take the derivative of each term. Fortunately for us there is an easier way to do this. The chain rule says that if y is a function of u and if u is a function of x, then dy dx is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. It's important to remember that dy over dx means the derivative of y with respect to x, while dy over du means the derivative of y with respect to u, and du dx means the derivative of u with respect to x. Here's an important note about the chain rule. The chain rule basically states that when you're taking the derivative of a composite function, you take the derivative of the outside function and multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. Let's look at an example of the chain rule. Let's consider again that big problem of y equals the quantity 4x squared minus 3x raised to the 25th power. The inside function in this case is going to be the quantity 4x squared minus 3x. The outside function would be y equals u to the 25th power. When we apply the chain rule, we're going to say dy du times du dx. Well, dy du is going to be 25 times u to the 24th power while du dx is going to be 8x minus 3, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. This simplifies to 25 times the quantity 4x squared minus 3x to the 24th power times 8x minus 3. What we've done in this step is we've taken the value of u and substituted it back in to get the final answer all in terms of x. Let's look at another example of the chain rule. Consider the composite function y equals the square root of 8 minus x cubed. 
Now remember what I said, we often let whatever is underneath the radical be the u. In this case, we can rewrite this as the quantity 8 minus x cubed raised to the 1 half power. The inside function is u equals 8 minus x cubed, so then the outside function is y equals u raised to the 1 half power. We're now going to take the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of the outside function is going to be 1 half times 8 minus x cubed to the negative 1 half power, while the derivative of the inside function is going to be negative 3x squared. When we simplify this, we end up with negative 3 halves x squared times 8 minus x cubed quantity to the negative 1 half power. Let's look at a third example. Let's consider the, the function y equals cosine squared of x. Remember, we can rewrite this as the quantity cosine of x squared. The inside function is going to be u equals the cosine of x, while the outside function is going to be y equals u squared. By the chain rule, we'll be able to say dy dx is equal to the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. The outside function is u squared, which when we take the derivative and substitute back in for u, we end up with 2 times the cosine of x to the first power, while the inside function is the derivative of the cosine of x, which happens to be negative sine of x. Simplifying this one step further gives us negative 2 cosine of x sine of x. Let's look at another example of the chain rule. Consider the function y equals e raised to the 5x minus 2 power. The inside function is the exponent 5x minus 2, while the outside function is e to the u. Applying the chain rule, we're going to take the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. Our outside function is e to the u, and since it is its own derivative, it would be e to the 5x minus 2. The inside function, 5x minus 2, has the derivative of 5. Simplifying this one step further gives us 5e to the 5x minus 2 power. This brings us to the generalized power rule. A special case of the chain rule is the generalized power rule, which states that the derivative of the quantity u of x raised to the nth power is n times the quantity u of x raised to the n minus 1 power times the derivative of u to the x. Let's say we have the function f of x equals 3x plus 8 raised to the 100th power. We're now going to use the generalized power rule to find its derivative. So to do this, we move the 100 out in front, then we take the quantity 3x plus 8, and we raise it to the 99th power. Now, what we need to include and multiply behind this is the derivative of whatever is inside parentheses. The derivative of 3x plus 8 is 3. So simplifying it one step further, we end up with 300 times 3x plus 8 to the 99th power. Let's look at a second example, the quantity e to the x raised to the 7th power. Applying the generalized power rule is going to give us 7 times the quantity e to the x raised to the 6th power times the derivative of whatever is inside parentheses. Well, inside parentheses, we have e to the x, and since it is its own derivative, when we simplify, we end up with 7 times e to the x to the 7th power. Let's take a look at the general exponential function. By exponential properties, we need to remember that a raised to the x power can be written as e raised to the natural log of a times x. So when we want to find the derivative of the general exponential function, the derivative of y equals a to the x is going to be found using the chain rule. Remember, y equals a to the x is equal to e raised to the natural log of a times x. This makes the inside function u equal to the natural log of a times x, and the outside function equal to y equals e to the u power. Remember, the chain rule, we find the derivative by taking the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. The outside function is e to the u, 
So the derivative of e to the u is e to the u, which would be in this case e times the natural log of a times x, while the derivative of the inside function would simply be the natural log of a. Well remember, back in the beginning, e to the natural log of a times x is the same as a raised to the x power, so simplifying this gives us a to the x times the natural log of a. What we have just determined is the derivative of y equals a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a. Let's look at some general exponential examples. Let's say we had f of x equals 8 raised to the x power. Using the previously determined formula, the derivative is going to be 8 raised to the x power times the natural log of 8. Let's consider a second example, such as f of x equals 10 to the x power. Using the formula again, we get the derivative of f is equal to 10 raised to the x power times the natural log of 10. Let's look at some more examples. How about if we had f of x equals 2 raised to the sine of x power? u, the inside function, would be the sine of x. The outside function would be y equals 2 raised to the u power. Using the chain rule to find the derivative, the, we would take the derivative of the outside function, which would be 2 raised to the sine of x power, times the natural log of 2, times the derivative of the inside function, which would be the cosine of x. Let's check ourselves. True or false? A composite function is a function inside of a function. True. The derivative of f of x equals the quantity 5x plus 3 to the fourth power is 5 prime of x equal 4 times the quantity 5x plus 3 raised to the third power. This is false. We would need to multiply this derivative times the derivative of the inside quantity, which happens to be a 5. The derivative of y equals sine of x squared is y prime equals 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. True. Multiple use of the chain rule. Some problems require the chain rule to be used more than once. As an example of this, let's look at the function y equals the sine of the quantity cosine of the quantity x cubed. This inside function is also a composite function, so the chain rule will be needed to take the derivative of it. The derivative is dy dx equals the derivative of the outermost function times the derivative of the cosine of x cubed times the derivative of the innermost function. So that makes the answer the cosine of the cosine of x cubed times negative sine of x cubed times 3x squared. In this section, we will discuss higher order derivatives.